I personally started data extraction for fun. I really enjoyed the way the program that I create with Python automatically goes to a website and extracts thousands of rows of data automatically for me. But this skill, which is so fun, also helped me get started with freelancing when I was in college and get to $4,000 per month after I became an expert at it. But not every data extraction expert earns this much and so I am gonna share what are all the skills that you may need to become the top paying data extraction and automation expert and earn above $4,000 per month or even $10,000 per month. Without any further ado, let's get started. First requirement, you should be able to extract data from any website even if it has employed the best antibot mechanism available. It does not matter what captcha it has, how the data is shown, if it requires JavaScript or not, if it requires logging in to the website or if it is using Cloudflare, Akemi Challenge or any other antibot mechanism. You should know how to extract data from all the websites. Now, I'll share what major tech stack I personally use later in this video which enables me to do this as a data extraction expert myself. But yeah, to become good at it, you have to keep scraping data from different websites. Personally, when I started out, I made a list of my favorite websites and then started scraping them one by one. You could do the same when starting out and then move to the next step which is just scraping data is not enough. There are tons of web scraping freelancers out there like if you see on Fiverr, Upwork, you will see hundreds of them. And so to become a top earner in this specific field, you need something to differentiate yourself from others to keep getting clients. And so you should also develop extra skills that can add value to a client's projects. You can then use these extra skills when you are interviewing for the web scrapping role or getting clients. Here are some examples of extra things you should be able to do. You should be able to give clients a bot that can run with a click of a button. Like most clients don't know coding or programming and they just want to get the job done. And so if you can give them a bot that they can use themselves with a click of a button, it can be helpful to them. You should make the process as easy as possible for the clients. The next thing you should know is how to bypass or solve any type of captcha. Now, usually there are two types of captchas. One is soft captcha and another is hard captcha. Soft captchas can be bypassed by mimicking human behavior and fortifying your browser, which means your browsers should look like it's a real browser and not an automated one. Like even if you are using Playwright or Selenium, which are headless browsers, the website should not know that you are using Playwright or Selenium. And so you have to take some steps to make it like that. It involves adding real request headers using good quality IPs when sending request and much more. Now, I wish I could share every small thing in detail, but I have gained this learning over years and so I am showing you the path, but you will have to take the steps by doing your own research and more projects, especially for real clients. Every small thing is available for free on internet. You just gotta search these points that I am sharing on Google or ChatGPT and read it in detail and try implementing each of this in your projects. Now, getting back to the main point, aside from soft captchas, there are hard captchas as well, like a captcha that always appears in a form or on a page even if you have mimicked human behavior and have developed a fortified browser. For tackling this hard captchas, you use captcha solving services like 2Captcha or Cap Solver. Both are amazing and there are even more that you can try. Now, there are also more skills which you should have. Like, you should be able to get data in all formats possible like JSON, CSV, Excel or any database as well. You don't need to practice each of them, like just see how to do them, try one or two and getting data in other format is actually pretty easy. Then, next skill is, you should be able to schedule the programs or scrapers that you have created on a server. Like if the client wants to scrape data every day at a certain time, you can just deploy the program you have created on a server and then schedule it using CronTab. If you want to run it on server in background, there is something also called Tmux sessions which are command line tool for Ubuntu server that allows you to keep running your program in background even if you are disconnected from your server. Then next thing is you should be able to build scalable solutions. Like if a client wants to run your specific automation program that you have created for thousands of users every day in his web app, he should be able to do it. And for this, since it's complicated, you can charge very high and it's recommended that you charge it on per hour basis for the client since it requires monitoring and updates as well. You can use something like AWS Lambda functions and connect it with your server to achieve this specific project. Now, I can understand that some of the things can be a little overwhelming for you, but you can take it step by step and you don't need to learn all of this in just a month or so. You can learn it based on the projects you are doing and then mention them as your skill. I personally learned this over years and as I completed projects for different clients. And so a great way to learn all of this is to actually start taking real world web scrapping freelancing projects from clients which take us to our next requirement which is research how the freelancing platform works. You will need to learn how this freelancing
freelancing platforms like Upwork or Fiverr work to be able to land the web scrapping gigs. You can even choose other freelancing platforms but basically they work almost the same. You need to learn about how to build up a profile, then how to send good proposals, then how to filter out good clients, then how to get your first client. I would recommend watching my freelancing playlist when you reach this step since I have shared each of the above point in detail there based on my learnings and I share how I got a top rated status on Upwork platform and how it actually helped me get a $75,000 of remote job from here itself after I finished my college. There is so much to learn about the platform for you to start getting clients from it. When I started out, I personally did not have any work experience since I was a college student and so the way I convinced client is by actually building portfolio projects that clients were looking to pay for and then showcase those projects as a proof to take on other projects as well. I constantly took a look at the types of projects the clients were posting on Upwork for web scrapping and I did them for practice before starting to work on the platform. I would recommend to do the same and after you do like 4 to 5 projects that you get from here from Upwork, you will already be very ready to start working since you have done the projects that clients were looking to pay for and you can then use those as a proof to convince the clients that you can do their projects as well and then you can start building a good profile here on the platform. I link my freelancing playlist at the end of this video. I have shared each point there in detail. Now coming to the next tip which is to have a good tech stack which is there for your every project. Here is my major tech stack which helps me to complete every web scrapping or automation project. First one is Scrapy. Scrapy is a web scrapping library that allows you to scrape thousands of rows of data asynchronously or parallelly and has different features like you can control the speed of scraping to prevent getting blocked then add any proxy rotations easily. It allows you to save the data in JSON, CSV or Excel format with just one command and much more. Essentially, it's a great library that simplifies large scale data extraction. Then next are Selenium, Puppeteer, Selenium Wire or other headless browsers. These are like your real browsers like Chrome or Mozilla Firefox which can be used for scraping data from websites that need JavaScript or when you need to perform user interactions in a project such as like filling out forms, clicking, typing then logging in and much more. Then there are other python libraries that I commonly use which are like pandas then selenium stealth then web driver manager. In python there is almost a library for every use case and so you can take the benefit of third party libraries to complete your project. Before starting to work on projects you can divide it in different steps and see if you can complete any of them with a third party python library which you can check via simple google search or by asking ai like chat gpt. I still do this in my project. Now next which are part of my tech stack as well are third party services like Zyat, 2Captcha, then DigitalOcean Droplet. Now there can be many times where you need to build scraping or automation project fast for clients. It should be scalable and you want to make the least updates over time. In this case, you can use third party paid services like Zyat or Zenros which are API services that handles the antibot mechanism for you. You can do complex automations like logging in, filling up form or more in them and they are scalable for thousands of requests. Then DigitalOcean Droplet is just like a server that you can use to schedule your applications. Then next major tool in my text stack is AWS serverless for scalability. AWS has many amazing services like Lambda functions, API gateway, EC2 server, then S3 storage, DynamoDB database and more which can be effectively used for complex and large scale automation projects that work for thousands of users. And so it can be very beneficial to learn these services and add them to your arsenal. It may take you around a month to get familiar with all the services of AWS serverless but it can be highly beneficial not only for web scrapping and automation projects but also to handle any backend related web development work. I have built complex SaaS projects which are software as a service project and websites and most of my backend infrastructure is built with serverless architecture and so it's highly recommended to learn it as a developer. Then coming to the next and final tip which is get to a level where you can solve tougher problems for high budget clients. The more complex projects you are able to do the more you learn and the more you can earn. When I was freelancing during my college time I purposely looked for complex projects in data extraction niche cause I knew that more the complex projects they are the less competition they have since like people are afraid to apply to those type of projects and the more I will be paid since others fear to do the stuff that I dare to do and I learn the maximum from those projects. So be ready to take on complex projects and try your best to do them. One great thing you can do is you can break down the big complex projects into smaller steps and then research on how you can complete each of them. This makes the project a bit easier to get started with and complete it. It's actually even alright if you fail. If you do fail you can always share the steps that you took to complete the project with the client and if it was a fixed price project you can offer a 
partial or full refund to the client. You will always learn even if you fail. I have personally failed as well in some of the projects but the clients are usually always very understanding and appreciate your efforts. But yeah, make sure you work with good clients which have got great feedback themselves which were given to them by other freelancers since like if you get a bad client then they can be pain in your environment. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it useful. I'll also link my playlist freelancing playlist here if you are interested in checking it out. Thank you and see you in the next video.